Hello everyone. In this video, I will be doing something different from what I have been doing in the past two or three months. As my IB students are preparing for their exams, I'm going to record videos on solving specific exam style questions. And for this video, the topic that I pick involves math and differential calculus, and it's about, it's about finding tangents and normals to function graphs and curves. And I choose math because number one, everyone in IB has to do maths. And number two, this particular topic is common to all four levels of IB maths. And number three, the techniques that I'm going to demonstrate in this video should be useful to not just IB students. Uh, it should also be useful for UK students doing their A-levels, uh, US AP students, AP calculus students. I'm from Hong Kong, so the Hong Kong DSC students would also find it useful. And finally, maybe even IGCSC or O-level at math or further math students in Southeast Asia should also find it useful. Uh, lastly, I don't think this particular type of uh, this particular topic has been over covered around YouTube, and I believe even the hard, uh, especially the harder examples that I'm going to demonstrate, uh, should be really useful for students aiming to score high on their exams, because these questions are quite peculiar. And before you guys go continue watching, I want to say that this video is aimed towards prepared students who are adept with some basic differentiation techniques such as power rule, derivative of standard functions, product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, and perhaps implicit differentiation if you're doing IBHL or A-levels or AP. If you don't know the above well, then you may want to stop watching and revise some of these more fundamental topics first. Uh, also, there will be case, uh, well, there will be places in uh, occasions during this video where I am skipping trivial algebra or skipping steps as I want to mostly focus on the calculus techniques. So without further ado, let's get started with the three basic steps in solving a tangent or normal problems. Of course, the first step is to differentiate. And secondly, if you are looking for the gradient of the normal, then you have to use the fact that the gradient of the normal should be the negative reciprocal of the gradient of the tangent, because the normal line and the tangent line by definition are going to run perpendicular to each other. Uh, the next step will involve using the given x value and finding not just the derivative value, but also the y value of the original function, as finding the point of contact is essential for solving any tangent or normal problems. So the most basic type of problem, level one, as you guys, as you guys can see, you have a function and you are given the point of contact and you just need to find the tangent. So I'll actually do some work. So my function here is a composite function. So e to the quadratic uh, x squared minus one, uh, point of contact, x coordinates given. So what you want to do, differentiate uh, using the chain rule, the exponent term remains unchanged for now, except that you do need to multiply by the derivative of the exponent, which happens to be two x. And now it's substitution time. So when x equals to negative two, the original function value equals to e to the negative two square is four, four minus one is three. Meanwhile, the derivative value would equal to, is also going to be e to the three um, times two times negative two. So that amounts to negative four e to the three. So we pretty much have everything we need. Um, at this point, you can just plug these plug the x value, y value, and the gradient into either this form, y minus y1 equals to the gradient x minus minus two, so x plus two. And I think this form is adequate for scoring marks. Uh, it's definitely adequate for scoring marks on an IB exam. I think our GCSC or O-level or even a level, if they don't ask you to expand it and give it in y equals to mx plus c form, then this is also a an acceptable final form. Uh, of course, you can expand the right hand side and put it into y equals to mx plus c form. Y equals to negative four e to the e cube x minus seven e cube. So that would be the final answer. And I do have the decimals result shown here. So the U-shaped curve is the original function and the purple line is the tangent. So moving on, next type of question. 
So this type of situation is, well, this is a type of situation where I, the question does not actually give you the function expression. Uh, the question does give you the function value and also the derivative value at the same set of x uh, coordinates. Uh, this type of function is especially common for IBSL and also AP. Uh, IBHL, you don't see this as often because they do want to test you on more algebra. Um, so here we have functions f and g with uh, f1, g1, f prime 1, g prime 1 all given. And then the question is asking for the equation of a tangent on a new function, which is a quotient of the original function. And clearly this is a quotient rule situation. So we use quotient rule even we don't have the function expression. So the denominator is just, just going to be the square of the origin, original denominator. Numerator is going to be like this. So maintain the bottom, differentiate the top, minus. Maintain the top, differentiate the bottom. H prime one will just equal to, well, we're just going to plug in G prime one squared, which is actually G1 squared without the prime, I bet. So two squared, so that would be four. Top left, we're looking at G1, which is two, and then F prime one, which is seven. And then what, what else do we have? So we have G prime one, which is one, and then F1 is four. So we just plug numbers in. I think you end up with H prime one equal to 14 minus 12 all divided by two squared, which is four, equals a half. Uh, we also need to find H1 itself. H1 can be just found by plugging in F1 and G1, my bad, I got it backwards. It should be four over two, which is two. And right now we just have Y minus two equals a half, X minus two, and that's your final answer. Now for the Next question, which this time is a composite function. So chain root time. So we have gx equals the natural log of f of x. And this time I'm asking for the normal. So we'll still differentiate first using chain rule. So differentiating natural log gives you one over the content of natural log. And then we multiply that by the derivative of the content of the natural log. So when x equals to three, this time we'll find the original function value first. Just ln of f3, f3 is four. So just natural log of four. So g prime three now would equal to one over f3, f3, what is f3? f3 is four and the f prime three is two. And since we are dealing with the normal, we have to take the ne negative reciprocal So y minus then four equals to negative two bracket x minus three and that's the equation for the normal. All right, so level two done. Now moving on to level three, this time we have a function. I give you the x coordinate, but then the function itself contains an unknown at this point, b. Uh, what you can still go ahead and do and differentiate and then just calculate the gradient in terms of this unknown. So for this particular function, the numerator is a constant, but then the denominator is somewhat complex. Uh, you have a choice of using quotient rule, or some people prefer to rewrite the entire thing as two times the denominator to the negative one and then use chain rule. Uh, honestly, both are fine. It depends on which method you are, or which technique you are more familiar with. Uh, here, uh, I would just find the, the derivative by performing, uh, by using the quotient rule. Uh, differentiate the bottom gives you something complex. Actually holding the bottom and then differentiate the top. Just derivative of two, which is zero. That's easy. Uh, the top right, however, you maintain the top and then you find the derivative of the bottom. And that involves the use of product rule because you have x times the derivative, derivative of natural log, which is one over x plus 
the next times the derivative of x, which is just one, and the b goes away. So this is the derivative. And if we clean up the top a little bit, And then now we can plug in x equal to one. Uh, we'll plug it into the original as well. F one equals to two all over one then one. Well, fortunately for us, then one is zero. So zero plus b is just b. F prime one, meanwhile, if we plug one into the thing, I think the numerator becomes negative two, uh, negative two alone. And then the denominator becomes zero plus b, all squared, so b squared. And then because this is the normal question, we have to take the negative reciprocal, which becomes this. And then the equation of the normal can be written to be y minus two over b e equals to the gradient b over two x minus one. And you know that the graph goes through the origin, thankfully. So we can substitute in x equal to two and y equals to two. So, my, so x equal to zero and y equal to zero, my bad. And then the algebra cleans up tremendously. And we have negative four equals to negative b cubed. So b equals to the cube root of four. Just write the three smaller. And I'll show you the final product on Desmos. A zoom square. And if you have the sketch graphs on the exam and you have to demonstrate the relationship between tangents and normals, um, I would strongly suggest you graph the two axes to the same scale. Um, graphing the two axes to the same scale allows you to spot like that your normal is indeed running perpendicular to the curve. So that's the level three example. Now to the last type. Tangents or normals to an external point without the point of contact. So these questions don't show up too much, but the problem is that when they do, the students are often at a loss of, well, they're just confused. They don't know how to get started. In terms of the most important thing is to express the point of contact in terms of some unknowns. So for the first question, we have a linear reciprocal function. Uh, find the possible, possible values of k such that the line y equals to kx plus 14 is a tangent to the graph. So Let's differentiate first. And the derivative can be figured out using quotient rule again. I'll just skip some steps because I've done this many times. So this happens to be the derivative of the graph. We don't know the point of contact, so we can let the point of contact be a comma. And in this case, because we are working with a function and we know that B uh, can be written in terms of A, which is going to be 2A plus 3 all over A plus 6. And now that we have this point of contact, we can realize that number one, the tangent itself needs to make contact with the graph of F of X. So to make contact, we have 2a plus 3 all over a plus 6 equals to kx plus 14 with um, x replaced by a. We also need to ensure that the tangent would have the same gradient as the derivative at x equals to a. So we can also write f prime a equals to the gradient of the tangent, but then clearly y equals mx plus c, the gradient equals to k, that we have nine all over a plus six all squared equals to k. And this is a substitution situation. We have a simultaneous equation situation with in terms of a and k, and substitution can get us there in a hurry, nine a all over a plus six squared plus 14. And if you clean this up, you'll end up with a quadratic, which can, and you can solve this, uh, it's factorizable. I'm not gonna show the breaking. So these are the two a values and then the corresponding k values will, you can figure out just by plugging a equals to these two values into one of the simultaneous equations, probably the second one. 
uh, the corresponding values of k will be one or four. And I'll just show you the results. So that's the original graph. This is one of the tangent that touches the negative branch and the other tangent touches the positive branch, I guess. And then they both have the y-intercept of 14. So question two is about some implicit relationship that can be well implicitly differentiated. So y squared minus x squared equals to eight. And I give you an external point four zero. And you can verify that four zero is not on the graph by just plugging x equal to four and y equal to zero. Zero squared minus four squared is not eight. So this is four zero is not on the graph. Uh, we'll go ahead and differentiate this first. I trust you guys are familiar with implicit differentiation. And then you can make dy over dx the subject, 2x over 2y equals to x over y. And I think this is a normal problem. So m normal would equal to negative y over x. Now the point of contact the well this time I will use a b because the given relationship is not a function. Even though you can kind of make b like what write y in terms of x. Well, in this case, you end up with a plus or minus sign, and that's not the nicest thing to deal with in solving an equation. You can do it case by case, but uh, try to keep it as a b first and then see how the algebra simplifies. And turns out uh, the next step that you want to write, rise of a run, because the points of contact when connected to the external point should produce a line, which should have the same gradient. Well, it's, it, it is a normal, so the gradient of this connector using rise, uh, rise over run. So we basically have b minus zero all over a minus four, because four zero are the x and y coordinates of the external point. And this gradient should equal to the result that we obtained from calculus. And now we can cross multiply a b equals to minus a b plus four b, moving everything to the same side to a b minus four b equals to zero. And this can be factorized. So we have either b equal to zero. Uh, b equal to zero turns out that's not going to lead to any solution because zero square minus x square equals to eight means x equal to x square equals to negative eight, which is got no real solutions. Uh, however, when two a minus four equal to zero, we have a equal to two, and then if we substitute this back into the original, y square minus two square equals to eight, y square equals to 12, y equals to root 12. Actually, I should say y square equal, or y equals to plus or minus root 12, because there are two points of contact. And now I'm going to show you the decimals result. So that's the curve. And then this negative gradient normal and then a mirror reflection for the positive gradient normal. So one more question, find the value of a so that an exponential graph has y equal to x as the tangent. So let's differentiate y equal to a to the x. I hope you guys know that the standard derivative of an exponential function whose base is not natural log, it's just lin a times a to the x. So let the point of contact be, well, I've used a within the original function. So let's just call this p, a to the p. And we know that the gradient at the point of contact needs to equal to one. So we can equate the gradient. So the gradient is ln p times, I bet it's ln a times a to the p, which equals a one. 
And we also need the two graphs to make contact themselves. So we have A to the P equals to P. And then this is just a matter of substitution at this point. A to the P can be replaced by P equals to one. Uh, the rest is not really too calculus based, but then there's some really cool log tricks that I will just finish off. So you can hide the P back into the power in, uh, of the number inside the natural law, and then A to the P equals to E, and because we have this previous result, P equals to E, and then we can further use the fact that E equals to A to the E, which means that E to the one over E, sorry, E equals A to the E, which means that E to the one over E equals to A. But then the gist of this problem is to match radiant and then write a second equation to describe the fact that the tangent needs to make contact with the original function. And to show you the result, So that's the function, that's the tangent. So this is a very touching outcome. So hopefully these calculus techniques are clear and understandable. So thank you for watching. Good luck on the exams. See you guys next video.